You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Hello, and welcome to the Living Full Out Show. My name is Nancy Solari, and today we're going to be talking about learning from loss. Now, Loss is one of those topics that, quite frankly, most people want to run from, and I get it, because heartbreak, sadness, depression, loneliness, everything that can come from losing a relationship, a career, you name it, it's devastating. But at the same time, we all have to realize that loss is going to happen. And I remember way back when my first loss was a goldfish, and you would think the three-year-old Nancy was the end of the world. But you know what? I learned a lot. From that, I learned that, you know, I could adopt a new goldfish. I learned to love that fish I had. Now, again, why do I give you that example? Because, honestly, the big ones, if we make them so big and we know that there's nothing positive on the other side, then it does make it heavy. It does make it exhausting. And sometimes we feel like we, we are hopeless. We can't bounce back. But I'm here to tell you today that you can. And I'm going to give you different reasons for how and things that you can do to manage loss. In fact, in our next uh, segment, we have our inspirational guest, Dennis Gillen, and he's going to talk about the loss of his two brothers due to suicide. And the thing is, is while the topic is heavy today, you know, I want you to call in about anything that you need motivation around. Again, that's 800-333-0001. The thing is, is to get over that hump, to get over that hurdle, to get into a more positive place, we do it together. And we are here for you now. In fact, I'm getting a word from our producer that we do have a caller on the line. Let's go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, Um, I have a quick question. Yes, what's going on? How do I I stay motivated? I tend to start a lot of projects, but I don't really kind of like follow through with them. Let me ask you a question. What is that feeling like when you start something and you know you didn't finish it? How does that make you feel? I start feeling horrible and actually kind of guilty. Kind of guilty, right? And we almost want to go into denial like, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see that project I didn't finish, right? So we quickly go into something else, right? But have you ever, have you ever completed something? Have you ever gone all the way? A few times I have, usually when the projects are a lot smaller. Okay. And how did that make you feel when you achieved it? Accomplished and excited. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Now, why am I asking you how did it feel when you didn't achieve it versus when you did achieve it? Consider the fact that in your mind you have emotional memories, like a filing cabinet, right? You have files and memories. Well, these are memories that you want to keep near and dear to your heart. So when you start a project, you want to remember, oh, that yucky, you know, heavy feeling, you know, unaccomplished, you let yourself down. You want to know what that feels like so that you don't allow yourself to go there again. But you also want to remember, gosh, the the smile that came to your face, the, the pride you had when you did achieve something. Keep those emotional memories near and dear. The other thing is what you've learned about yourself is that you do best when you break things down, right? You just said that the the times that you've achieved and you've gone all the way, those were when they were more manageable, more tangible projects, right? So what I would do is when you take something on, and let's just say it's even cleaning the house, right? To say, I'm going to take Saturday and clean the house. Well, you're probably not going to clean the whole house, right? So set yourself up for one room and conquer that one room all the way. Or if one room is even too big, then break it down and say, I'm just going to do my dresser drawers. That's all I'm expecting myself today. Same goes for studying for a test or same goes for putting out resumes or do you see what I'm saying? Can you try that? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. 
Well, and the great thing is I didn't even teach you that. See, you know that. You actually know that about yourself. So, so, so say to yourself, be your best friend and say, the minute somebody gives you a project or you, uh, you're you about to say yes to something, stop yourself and say, you know what? No, 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 no. I know myself well enough. This is too big, but I'm going to go all the way. And I know how good it feels to go all the way. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you for calling in. Love that she asked that question, right? Because the thing is, is we all have that ability to say, I'm going to do this. But yet, it's just sometimes it's too much. And then, I don't know about you guys, but I definitely in my life have been a yes person. Nancy, can you help me move? Yes. Nancy, can you help me with this? Yes, right? Sometimes we say yes to too many things. And then before we know it, the to-do list is like two pages long, right? So we have to find a way to pull it back. Now, we are talking today about learning from loss, right? So when we consider losing out on an opportunity, because maybe we are, we're distracted, we've taken on too much, or maybe the loss of a relationship, but yet we feel like we don't deserve or we'll never find another one. You know, it's amazing how in our mind we believe these negative thoughts, but they're not true. You actually have the ability in your life to write your own story. And you can have chapters in your life. You can have pages in your life. You might have multiple volumes of your book. It might be so big. And, but the thing is, to know that you can turn a page, to know that you can change the narrative anytime you want. That is how you get over loss. Now, we're going to go back to the phone lines and talk to another caller. Hi, welcome to Living Full Out Show. Hi, my name is Talia. I have a Hi. question for you. Yes, how can we help you? Um, so I've just been wondering, um, like lately, what are some ways or even some things that you can do uh, to help you keep a positive mindset, like on a day-to-day -day basis. So where do you feel like you're the most exhausted, the most heavy, around what part of your life? Um, probably, probably work. Okay. And is, and is, it, is it because you don't enjoy what you do, or is it because you're overworked? I think it's because I'm overworked. I really enjoy what I do, but I just think that sometimes it gets like a, a little exhausting. Mm -hmm. And and why is it exhausting? Is it, is it physically or mentally exhausting? Um, mentally exhausting, just mentally. because I have to see and talk to a lot of people all day, so it's it's just it gets a bit much sometimes. Okay, and what do you do for a living? What is that career? Um, so I'm actually a a server at a restaurant. Oh, okay. And you know what? I My hat goes off to servers. I tried doing that and I wasn't good at it. Okay. So if you're good at it, then I get it. And there's a lot of requests that come your way, right? Some are easy yeah. and some are tricky and some are customers are disappointed and some have a positive experience and you have to connect all those dots. So, so here's the thing. We're talking today about managing loss, but we're, I'm also trying to have everybody consider emotional memories, okay? So when you're having this really long day, when you have a pocket of time, maybe you're, you know, doing side work, you know, prepping either before a shift or after a shift, remember yeah. to always say positive things to yourself. Remember to think about what are you making all this money for? It might be for the basics like rent and food and that sort of thing. But think about the yummy foods that you're going to buy with the money. Think about the fact that you have a place to sleep, or maybe it's a yeah. vacation you're saving for. So when you get that grumpy client, when you've taken on two shifts and you're working like an 11-hour day, you have to know what you're fighting for. Do you keep those in mind? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a good idea. And, and honestly, again, my hat goes off to you, but, but it's really important that you, you set the tone. So when you get in the car and you go to work, listen to inspiration. Listen to music that's going to energetically fire you up. Then during the day, have those emotional memories in your mind. Have those mantras. You can say them out loud or maybe just think them in your mind. And then, you know, after you get off work, have in your car, again, or in your earbuds, music that you can lift, that, that can kind of switch the gears, that can switch you from being in mm -hmm. work mode to play mode. So when you do all of that, now just like how as a server you connect the dots, 
You're letting motivation connect the dots of your life so you're not so worn out. Can you do that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much. So, <laughs> exactly. Well, thank you so much for calling in and uh, we'll be thinking good thoughts for you. Okay. Thank you. And for everybody today, we are talking about learning from loss and we're going to be coming right back with our inspirational guest, Dennis Gillen, who sadly lost two brothers to suicide. But even though that happened, you know, he's a man of integrity and he made a vow to himself that he would get himself into a more positive place. And you're going to learn how he did that. And also, I want to make sure that you're supported throughout today's call. So make sure to reach out to us throughout the show. I'm Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. Hi, professional skateboarder Tony Hawk here with Bugs Money and Daffy Duck to remind you to get moving every day. Because when you get moving an hour a day, you'll have the energy to skate through anything. <laughs> nice play on white, Doc. That's how I roll, Bugs. So whether you like to work the half pipe, now that's catching air, kick the soccer ball around, or dance in your room, just move it your way for an hour a day. The way you like to move, as long as you're moving. Carve out some time every day and get active. Because it's time to do a 180 on what you think exercise is. Because it can be whatever you want it to be. So be a player. Be a player. Get up and play an hour a day, Doc. Check out how to be a player at letsmove.gov. Head online to get tips on great ways to get moving every day. At www.letsmove.gov. Let's hear that one more time, Doc. That's www.letsmove.gov. A message from the Ad Council and HHS. I'm Nancy Solari, Certified Life and Business Coach. I want to invite you to the Personal Development Boot Camp. During the boot camp, we're going to be looking at taking those insecurities that you have and getting rid of them. We're also going to look at ways in which you can thrive and live a life full of purpose. Go to livingfullout.com forward slash boot camp, livingfullout.com forward slash boot camp to sign up. I believe in you and here's to you living your life full out. I'm Sarah, and this is my story. I'm Ellen, and this is my story. One night, I was at a bar. One night, I was at a bar. I was having fun with my friends. I was having fun with my friends. I had one too many drinks. I had one too many drinks. I got behind the wheel to go home. I got a cab to go home. All of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a squirrel ran across the road. And all of a sudden, from out of nowhere, a squirrel ran across the road. It happened so quickly, I barely had time to react. It happened so quickly, the cabbie barely had time to react. I swerved. The cab swerved. I can't believe it. I hit a guy. I cannot believe it. The cabbie just missed a guy. I wish I took a cab. Thank goodness I took a cab. You have the choice to save a life. Don't drive buzzed. It's a decision you'll never regret. Buzzed driving is drunk driving. Brought to you by the Department of Transportation and the Ad Council. Hey, America, we need to have a little talk. We've got more food than we know what to do with in this country, yet 17 million kids in America are struggling with hunger. Makes no sense. Luckily, the Feeding America Nationwide Network of Food Banks has volunteers gathering excess food and getting it to hungry kids. They're kind of like food angels. Hey, become a food angel yourself by supporting Feeding America in your local food bank at feedingamerica.org. We can't do it without your help. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. If you think depression is all in a person's head, you're right. It's a brain illness. And like other illnesses, it has symptoms. Depression can make those who suffer from it feel hopeless. It can even lead to suicide. Learn how to stop depression from taking another life. Call SAVE, Suicide Awareness Voices of Education. 1-888-511-SAVE. On the web at save.org. I'm Alec Baldwin. Like any parent, I'm concerned about children's health. Many kids don't eat as they should and are at risk for long-term health problems like diabetes and heart disease. But here's good news. Fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and other low-fat vegetarian foods can protect our kids and keep the rest of the family healthy too. For a free booklet, call the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine at 1-877-685-KIDS or visit www.kidsgethealthy.org.
You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. With Nancy's expertise, you'll learn how to embrace your potential and strive for success. If you have a question or need further support, send us an email at connect at livingfullout.com. Now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about learning from loss. And while that can be a heavy topic. You know, we strive to look for inspirational guests that have gone through it and have come out the other side and and still live full out today in the memory of those they've lost, but also for their own life to make sure that, you know, we are living a life of purpose. So today we have brought you Dennis Gillen, who lost two brothers to suicide. And although that is tragic, He has gone on to build a legacy to support his brothers, to be a voice for them. And we can all be that for other people. So I'd very much like to welcome Dennis to the show. Well, Nancy, thank you very much for having me. And I appreciate you and taking on this tough subject. But thank you. Well, and and thank you for the courage to share your story and and also a blessing there for that. And and I want to let our audience know, although this is a heavy topic, Feel free to reach out to Dennis outside of the show or our show um, if you're having, you know, suicidal thoughts or just feeling depressed and and do need someone to talk to because it is a heavy topic. But I I know, Dennis, you grew up in a family where you had five kids and you were right in the middle, number three, and you were a close family. But in October 1983, your world changed when you got news about your brother, Mark. What had happened? Yes, I was away at college. I was about eight hours from home. I grew up outside of New York City, a little town called Valley Cottage, New York. And I got a call from my younger sister. And you you mentioned the five. It's Sheila, Mark, Dennis, me in the middle, Janice, and Matthew. And Janice was on the phone saying, Dennis, you need to come home. And I'm like, well, I'm right where I need to be. I have two tests tomorrow in school. And then she said, you don't understand. Mark died in a car accident. And that's what they told me, Nancy. And Mark had battled depression for years. And the disease state one, Mark, Mark died by suicide. And I I'd come to learn that later in the day. And I, I went home and, um, oh, it was awful. Absolutely awful. I can remember it was like yesterday. It was October 26, 1983. It was a Wednesday and, um, our, our, our entire world changed. Well, I know that moment. you had seen your mom cry. I think you'd seen your dad cry for really the first time. And every family handles it differently, but your family, chose to kind of move on in some ways, business as normal. So when you, you know, after Mark's passing and and this devastation, how did you cope with it? Yeah. And going back in time, maybe that's how we try to do it. You know, proud Irish family. We, uh, we try to pretend it didn't happen. I think almost out of self-defense or self-preservation. I went back to school, you know, I left on a Thursday to go home and I was back in school on Tuesday, you know, I did the funeral, came back. And uh, I didn't handle it very well. If you, if you, you know, you swallow your problems, your stomach keeps score. I started drinking and drinking heavily, trying to mask the pain. I can't speak to the others how they handled it. I do know that um, we didn't talk about it much. Uh, when I came back home for Thanksgiving, we just didn't speak about Mark. It was sad, but that's how we handled it back then. I like to think we do not handle that like it now. We talk out loud about this stuff. Um, you know, we're well, and, and, so it's, and today we're talking yeah. about learning from loss. So in some ways, your family learned over time here to talk about it, to to not bottle it up. And with Mark's passing, everybody kind of bottled it up and, and you took it out on, you know, drinking and experimenting with drugs. And I know your grades had suffered. And it, interestingly enough, though, you were still functioning and still you know, continuing to check those boxes and your career and so forth. And, you know, it doesn't happen very often, but it did happen for you that 11 years later, July 16th, 1994, Janice called you once again. And what did she say? Yeah, that was a Monday. And I was, you're right. I was everything, by all accounts, I looked like I had recovered pretty well, had a good job, living in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And then she, she rocked my world and said, you know, Matthew died, and um, she actually said, that, you know, the, the method and the means on the phone, and, and, you know, for your listeners, I lost brother number two to suicide, and golly, one is awful, two will wreck you. We have 48,000 in America right now. Um, 
I wouldn't wish one on the devil himself, Nancy. It was awful. Mm. You know, the, the thing about Mark is you and him were different. Mark was very techy and you were a jock. And, you know, you guys were very close in age, 20 and 21 when he passed. Um, but Matthew was seven years younger and you really took him under your wing. I mean, you, he had had an accident in high school and it, well, while he had chronic pain, you, you were there to nurture him. You were there to guide him, to teach him sports, to help him get an apartment. And, you know, really a much different loss in some ways, than when Mark had passed. Absolutely a much different loss, especially when you're the older brother. Maybe I should have been looking out for Matthew, but I was in my own little bubble trying to figure out what happened with Mark. And we all were, and we weren't talking about it. So if you're, you're learning to live with loss, I would take route number two, what I took with Matthew, is um, that threw me into a dark, dark uh, depression after Matthew died. And it was at that point I decided, one, to stop drinking. That wasn't helping. We all know alcohol is a depressant, and I, you know, I was pretty depressed as it was, uh, really depressed. And then, and two, I went and saw a mental health professional for the first time in my life. And well, that and that's really, in, and that's really important um, because for the first time, you were noticing that you couldn't do this on your own. Whereas with Mark, you had really just kind of bottled it up. What made you, with Matthew, decide you know what this is bigger than me? I had a, through an employer, I had an employee assistance program, and I just couldn't shake it. At this time, I'm married, and I'm, we're, we're trying to have a, a child. We had a little trouble with the conception. Um, took longer than we'd all like. You know, that happens. It's life. And then uh, I said, I can't dump on my wife. I just can't do it. She, we're trying to do this other thing um, and get pregnant. So I just like, I can't talk to her. I don't want to talk to my buddies. And it just dawned on me. I had this little flyer on my desk for the employee assistance program. Like, you know what? I'm going that route. And it was that, you know, it was offered free, uh, eight free sessions. And Nancy, I've had really good insurance in my life. I've had lousy insurance in my life. I have paid cash money to go see my mental health therapist. Wow. And, and I think that's important that you brought that up because I don't know that a lot of people think about that as being a service of their insurance. And that could be if you're dealing with any loss or if you're having your own suicidal thoughts or you're dealing with a breakup or whatever that loss or loneliness that you're feeling. So I, I'm, I'm so proud of you for having, you know, taken that flyer and, and, and ran with it. Now, I want you to stay with us, Dennis, because you really have gone on to build a legacy in the names of your brother and your dad. And we'll get to all of that when we come back from this break. And for everybody listening, again, this is a very sensitive topic, I realize, but you know, you can live full out in the names of those that you've lost. You can tap into your purpose by giving to others. And today, Dennis is a great example of that, and you'll learn more as we unfold his story. So uh, it's all about learning from loss today. I am Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. Stay with us. We'll be right back. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Solari. There are many sounds in your day-to-day life. There are sounds that wake you up. Sounds that make you smile. Sounds that energize you. And sounds that help you relax. But there are some sounds that can alert you to danger and can help save lives. Wireless Emergency Alerts, now on many mobile devices, use a unique sound and vibration to bring you information about severe weather events, amber alerts, or other emergencies in your area. With critical information from local sources you know and trust, you can be in the know, wherever you are. For more information, visit ready.gov alerts. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Hello, 
my name is Jeffrey, but people in this town call me Maniac. They call me that because I'm the fastest runner in town. But just because everyone knows who I am doesn't mean I belong. I don't really belong anywhere. You see, I'm an orphan, and I wander the streets just looking for a place that I can truly call home. My name is Maniac McGee, and I'm all alone. Explore new worlds. Read my story in the novel Maniac McGee by Jerry Spinelli. For other great book ideas, visit your local library or log on to literacy.gov. Brought to you by the Library of Congress and the Ad Council. Look for the bare necessities. The bare necessities of healthy living are easier than you think. You better believe it. And the food pyramid shows you the way. With just the right amount of exercise and the necessary grains, vegetables, fruits, milk, and meats and beans. Just the bare necessities of life. So eat right, be active, and have fun. Yeah, man. For your own path to a healthier you, visit MyPyramid.gov. This is really living. This message brought to you by the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Ag Council. Hi, my name is Nancy Soleri, host of the Living Full Out Show. I am excited to let you know that we are now associated with Alexa. If you have Alexa in your house and you didn't know that, go ahead and find Living Full Out because you can hear us anytime you want. And we're there for you to keep you motivated. Go to your app store because we're located there as well. Just look for the Living Full Out radio show. It's important to us that we put out really inspiring programming But we want to make sure that you have it at your fingertips when you need us most. We never know when those challenges are going to come, when we're going to feel lonely and need that motivation. So just know that when you need us, we're here for you. Check out Alexa, the app stores, or go to livingfullout.com. Here's to you living full out. What if I could tell you that a full-blown wildfire was going to occur tomorrow right where you live? Tell you exactly which neighborhoods it would engulf and how fast it would do it. The first thing you would do is talk with your loved ones and make a plan today. It's true. I can't tell you a wildfire will strike tomorrow. But shouldn't you make a plan anyway? Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Driving has a rhythm all its own. Don't wreck it with a text. Before you get behind the wheel, silence your phone. Or better yet, designate a texter. For more text-free driving tips, visit stoptextstoprex.org. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. As a life coach, Nancy can teach you how to stay strong under pressure and work through challenges you face. Being legally blind, Nancy inspires others to be resilient in overcoming obstacles and live full out. You can ask Nancy for advice in your life on relationships, finance, business, health, and more. Just call in at 800-333-0001. Once again, that's 800-333-0001. Now, here's Nancy. Welcome back. I'm Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about learning from loss. And we have brought an inspirational guest today, Dennis Gillen, who has gone through it. But yet today he stands tall, and he really is there in helping others to get through loss due to suicide. And so I'd like to welcome Dennis back to the show. Well, thank you, Nancy. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Now, Dennis, you obviously went through this twice, once with Mark and once with Matthew. And it's understandable everybody's reactions are going to be different. With Mark, after it happened, you kind of went into de- denial mode. You kind of, you are a man of faith and you kind of pushed your faith aside. But when you lost Matthew, again, being a man of faith, now you were angry. Now you needed God to give you answers. But you also had a demand of your own. What was that? Yeah, I wouldn't recommend this to anyone, but I was a little mad at God, as you can imagine, having walked behind the casket of two brothers uh, to suicide. So after Matthew died, remember earlier I mentioned we were uh, trying to have a baby and, and things weren't going the way we wanted to. And I sort of pointed my fist at the sky and said, God, you know, we made a deal. If we, if we get pregnant, 
I'll never drink again alcohol. I'll never drink alcohol again. I was, you know, I was struggling with it. And I just made one of those pivotal deals with God. I'm a man of my word. And about a month later, uh, we took one of those home pregnancy tests and we found out we were, we were um, pregnant. And I hadn't been drinking after Matt's funeral. I, I got drunk the night before and knowing that I was depressed, but this was like a couple of weeks later. I, I was just so mad at God, so mad. And then um, from the, you know, the lowest lows came the highest high. And, and I can remember that day. That was a Friday. I can remember these like yesterday that we had the, uh, the positive pregnancy test. And I was like, holy miracle. Wow. Game changer. Now, I'm sure many people said to you, Dennis, what are you going to name your son? And I'm sure people asked, are you going to name him Mark? Are you going to name him Matthew? And how did you decide to choose the name? It was interesting. I didn't want to name him after my brothers. I really didn't. I wanted Martin to have his own little identity in this world. And and knowing that my dad went through, you know, I'm the brother, obviously, and I lost two brothers. I, I can't even imagine now as a father what my dad went through twice. So I named my son after my father. You know, there was no Martin Juniors in our family. You know, Martin is my dad's name. He had Mark, Dennis, and Matthew for sons. And I figured it was okay. So I named my son Martin Joseph Young, right after mm. my dad. I love that. I love that. And, and you know, today we're talking about learning from loss. And when you think about the loss of Mark, the loss of Matthew, and those were obviously suicides and you know, how do you square the circle of, could I have done something differently? Did I miss a sign? Because for a lot of people who lose someone to suicide, there's that, I could have done more, I should have done more. And there's a lot of, you know, guilt. There is. There, that's what makes, a, what makes a suicide death so unique. If, if Mark was driving down the road and a tree fell and hit his car, I think, I act of God, it happens. Um, with any suicide, you know, you feel like they reject the environment they're in and you're a big part of it. I'm a family member. So you always grapple with it. It does get better. You know, and one time I was working on the suicide prevention lifeline and someone said, Dennis, if someone's going to die by suicide, they're going to die by suicide. I said, hold on, we're trying to prevent it. And what she was trying to do is get in my head a little bit and, and relieve, relieve me of some of that guilt so I can go on and be a better helpline volunteer. But it was, um, it just comes with the package. You know, gone is gone. I've learned that. It doesn't matter if Mark had a heart attack or Matthew died, you know, in a car accident, something. Gone is gone. They're not coming back. But with the suicide, it just comes. And any suicide, where I'm a survivor of suicide loss, and there's people with lived experience. That is, they went um, maybe to that dark place and maybe attempted and lived, and thank God for that. But survivors of suicide loss all, almost to a T, would tell you that it's always that would have, could have, should have. And I think we just take that with us. Yeah. It doesn't get easier. And there's, you know, definitely uh, shades of recovery and the grieving process, but much harder. And I, I know for you, you were frustrated in some ways with Matthew because you felt he should have known better having watched what your family went through with Mark. And, you know, I know you were angry. You were actually calling his voicemail, <laughs> yelling at him. And so where did that come from? It was just, I, think, I remember saying to a friend of mine, I said, I did this already. I did this already. And, and you know, poor Matthew, he was right there. I was in college when Mark died, and I went back to college. But Matthew was there at Ground Zero at the house. So I, I've learned to give him grace, but initially, Rance, you're spot on. I was so mad. I said, he should have known better. He should have mm-hmm. known better. You know, Mark's death, you know, crushed us. Matthew wrecked us. Um, I just thought, kept thinking that he should have known. He should have known. He should have known. But when someone's in that that tough spot, I don't think they think long term. You know, they, they're both in their twenties. Maybe your brain doesn't start forming until your mid twenties. They can't see the big picture. You couldn't mm-hmm. see it. You just couldn't see it. And on the outside looking in, I'm like, yeah, I can see it big time. This is terrible. You know, you had consecutive losses in terms of your brothers and then your dad eventually, but he died peacefully, you know, naturally. Um, but I think for a lot of people, whether it be a loss of a family member, a loss of a job, a breakup of a relationship, you know, they, they feel like they're walking on eggshells. They, they figure like what's next. And it's becomes this dark cloud of negativity and self-talk in their mind. How did you kind of clear the clutter? 
Well, the, the, the two things I did, the, the sobriety piece and the mental health uh, professional. You know, I was an accounting major. I'm not a mental health professional. So I that helped. And then finally, after a while, and keeping it bottled up, I decided through a fundraiser I was going to talk about it. Somebody said, hey, you know, the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention does this walk. I, I ended up doing the walk and then raised some money. And they said, hey, can you speak about your experience at the walk? And I finally, for the first time ever, I opened up my mouth and I told the world about Mark and Matt. And it was a cathartic experience. I just let it out and sat down. And I remember saying, wow, that's that's done. And a woman came up to me and says, you need to tell that story more often. And I remember telling her, like, no, I'm done. I just told it. It's over. And I just remember those words. You need to tell that story more often. Mm. And then after that, that little fundraiser, someone was in the crowd at, in a local college, and they called me in to speak and to their psychology interns. And I thought I was ready to speak about it, but I don't think I was. Because when they introduced me, this is for any of your listeners. You, know, you can't believe, sometimes you just can't believe this is the life you're living. They were introducing this guy that lost two brothers to suicide. And I'm sitting there, and it's me. And I'm sitting there going, wow, that poor guy. Because I never heard myself introduced. And I'm like, oh. And then they go, ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Gillen. And it dawned on me. I'm like, that guy's me. Yeah. I, I heard it externally for the first time. I've always heard it in my head. But I heard someone describe it, and I just started crying. And I cried for the entire hour I spoke. It was awful. Wow. Awful. You know, people have really hard jobs sometimes. They're caregivers, they're nurses, they're doctors, they're teachers, they're servers in a restaurant, you know, whatever it may be. And it's so easy sometimes to say, I give up. It's too hard. The topic's too hard. The job is too hard. I feel heavy. What keeps you going? It's interesting. I've thought about that a couple of times as a speaker now going around and um, you know, sometimes I go back, I can't do this anymore. It's just brutal. But every now and then I'll speak somewhere and I'll get a feedback loop. Someone will reach out on Instagram or Facebook Messenger and they always say, Nancy said, I, you know, I, I came to your talk. I didn't want to come. But, you know, said, That's fine. I didn't want to give it. Um, and they say, you know, but I'm glad I did and you made me feel normal again. Or you know, you're giving me hope. And that the talk focuses on hope. I go over my brothers early. We go over warning time risk factors. And then we, we really focus on hopeful and, and like the positive aspects of living and, and why suicide is not the answer. But every now and then I get one of those. I have this file. I print them out. I have this file. And whenever I think about packing it in, I go to that file. And I read one of those notes and say, no, you can't pack it in, Dennis. Mm -hmm. You've got to keep going. Yeah. And I guess as I wrap this up, you know, because suicide is a loss that it, it feels like they were taken from you, even though they did it, have you forgiven them? I have. I went to a fundraiser, another one. I went to a walk, and they, they said, we're going to do this balloon release. And they asked me to do it because I was one of the top fundraisers. I, I'm not doing that balloon release. And my ex-wife at the time said, you got to do it. You got to do it. So I went up there, and right before I released the balloon, and I'm not a big symbolism guy, but it worked. Right before I released it, I just said, Mark, Matthew, I forgive you. And I let the balloon go. And for some reason, this weight lifted off. I'm like, all right, you cannot hold this against them anymore. You've mm -hmm. got to go on. You, you can't carry that rock. I let the balloon go. And if anyone's into that, if you want to write a note and burn it, whatever you want to do to get take care of you, that little thing worked. I'm mm -hmm. like, huh. All right, I do forgive them. Yeah, I, didn't yeah. know, I don't know what they were going on, and I, I have my life to live, you know? Well, I have to say, Dennis, I mean, for a very heavy topic, you've taught us today as a way of learning from loss and letting it go. You can release the balloon. You can create a legacy like speaking on behalf of those that can't. Um, you could take the loss of suicide and pay it forward to educate others and and just be of a sounding board and support for others. And also, you know, you taught us it's okay to draw your line in the sand. It's okay to make a request of God and to turn a new page. And you did that. What, 25 years sober now? You're doing it. Uh, you're keeping you're your 26. promise. 26. Yeah, exactly. 26 years. You are yeah, a man of yeah. word and you're an amazing man, Dennis. Thank you so much for sharing your story with us today. Well, thank you, Nancy. Thank you for having me on. Absolutely. 
And for everybody listening today, we encourage you to reach out to us at connect at livingfullout.com. If you have gone through it yourself, you've gone through a crisis, an accident, you have a health condition, a disability, whatever it is, you're in good company. Dennis has overcome what he has, the loss of his brothers. I have my blindness. Everybody's got something, but we can all share our story and teach each other and elevate each other to live full out. Again, that's connect at livingfullout.com. We really welcome to hear from you. We'll be coming back, taking more of your calls. I am Nancy Solari. This is the Living Full Out Show. And today it's about learning from loss, releasing that heaviness, and really allowing our hearts and minds to soar and live full out. That's what it's about. We'll be back. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with, all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese, and guess what? Egg rolls showed up, like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. So, Jacqueline. Yes, Mom? I wanted to talk to you about something, and... Oh, wait. Hold on. I just got a text. Oh, wait, Mom. I just got a message. So many comments on my comment. Hey, guys, check out my new video game. Mom, what? Huh? What'd you say? This weekend, unplug. Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. To find the forest nearest you, go to discovertheforest.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service and the Ad Council. Thanks for asking, but I'd rather not send you nude pictures. I'm camera shy. I already said no. It's against my religion. I'm giving my dog a bath. You can have pictures of that. Pressure gives me hives. Under my clothes, I'm a robot. Hold on. Let me ask my mom. Sorry, my webcam is broken. I'm worried they'll get passed around school. Unfortunately, I just had my clothes surgically attached to my body. If they got out, I might never be president. I'm already naked, under my clothes. Not even if you were all three Jonas Brothers. I have a rash. I have nudophobia. I have lizard skin. The more you ask, the less I want to. You're not the boss of me. Nudity makes me vomit. I'm a vampire, so I don't show up in pictures anyways. Your badgering has really killed the mood. When someone is pressuring you to do something you don't want to, how many ways can you say no before they get the message? Let us know at that'snotcool.com. Brought to you by the Ad Council. If you own a gun, you have a full-time responsibility. When you aren't using it, be sure it can't get into the hands of curious children, troubled teenagers, a thief, or anyone else who might misuse it. Your family, friends, and neighbors are all counting on you. Remember, always lock it up. For more information on firearm storage safety, visit ncpc.org. This message brought to you by the National Crime Prevention Council, the Bureau of Justice Assistance, and the Ad Council. This is a test to find out if you know it all when it comes to children. Name one of the leading killers of U.S. children age 1 to 13. What's the best way to protect children in a car crash? At what age and size should a child start using a booster seat? Don't assume you know it all when it comes to car seats for your child. Go to safercar.gov slash the right seat and know for sure. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. When I grow up, I want to be a new pair of blue jeans. When I grow up, I want to be a kid's first computer. I want to be a, warm on a, I want to be a football stadium. I want to be a bike that races around the country. I want to be a bench on a forest trail. When I grow up, I don't want to be a piece of garbage. And if you recycle me, I won't be. Give your garbage another life. Recycle. Learn how at IWantToBeRecycled.org. Brought to you by Keep America Beautiful and the Ad Council. Well, I finally did it. My student loan is totally paid off. What? What about our plan to win the lottery and start living? You know, travel the world on matching yachts. Wear enough jewelry to require a bodyguard. Vacation on the French Riviera. And then buy it. You know we're never going to win the lottery, right? When it comes to financial stability, don't get left behind. Get tools and tips for saving at feedthepig.org. 
This message brought to you by the American Institute of CPAs and the Ad Council. After a loss, it can be very frustrating and lonely, whether it be a career loss, relationship, or someone you love. But you have the ability to honor your grieving process and your feelings, but then choose to leave a legacy for yourself and those that you love. That is how you live full out. You're listening to Living Full Out with Nancy Soleri. Nancy is here as a guide to show you how to rise above obstacles and savor each moment. If you have a question, call in live at 800-333-0001. That's 800-333-0001. And now, here's Nancy. Thank you for joining us today. I am Nancy Soleri, and this is the Living Full Out Show. And today we're talking about learning from loss. And as we kind of round the show out today... I want to talk about it in a more positive way, how you can take an emotional memory and make it a positive one. I remember when my grandmother passed away, my Nana, I loved my Nana. When she passed away, I was only nine years old, and I remember holding her hand in the hospital, and I just rubbed her hand, and I rubbed my thumb in like a circle. And even today, when I take my hand and I rub my thumb in a circle, it takes me back to that time. You know, that's my Nana. Or when my dad passed away of cancer, and I was rubbing his bald head, and I smelt his skin, and, you know, I listened to him breathe, and, you know, I was able to just really take in with all my senses, other than my sight, because obviously I'm legally blind, I, I took in my dad. And so I always have those memories with me. And the thing about life is that we have the ability to choose to relate to a positive emotional memory. We have the ability to turn a page in our life, start a new chapter, embrace change rather than resist it. So as we journey through the end of the show today, I want you to come out of this place of heaviness and loneliness, and I want you to embrace building that legacy, honoring your emotions, and that is how you live full out. Now, I'm getting word from our producer that we do have a caller on the line. We're going to go say hello to them. Hi, welcome to the Living Full Out Show. Hi, I have a question. Yes, how can I help you? Um, Hi, how do I stay motivated with my goals during this unprecedented time? I feel as if it's Groundhog's Day every day. (laughs) You know, I am with you. I'm with you, sister. Um, Here's the thing. Groundhog's Day is a good movie. So, well, first of all, we'll say that. But you're right. So here's the thing. We've talked about this throughout the whole show today. The ability to embrace change, the ability to, you know, follow our own actions. So, yes, while it may seem like Groundhog's Day if you're home all the time and you go to sleep at the same time, you wake up around the same time, but it's what you do in the middle. So, what have you done? Just one thing new this week. Um. Well, let's see. I... Um, I went for a a walk, uh, I actually went for a hike in a, in a park that I I haven't been to yet. And how fun and exciting was that? Oh, it was wonderful. It was really wonderful. Mm Mm-hmm. But you did that. You chose, um, I could go the route I normally go, but I'm going to shake it up today. I'm going to do something different. And it wasn't Groundhog's Day because you did that something different. It could be that you like your eggs a certain way and you make them a certain way every day. Or it could be that you go on Netflix and you tend to watch the same series over and over again. Maybe it was on for seven years and there's lots of episodes to watch, right? But again, you have the ability to say, you know what? I'm going to try something new today. I'm going to try a new show just based off the title. It sounds interesting. So what is something new in this next week that you can do? Well, let's see. Um, could just be making food. It could be what you watch. It could be what you do. Well, actually, I do have uh, I, I, I have a new garden, so I'm going to tend to my new garden. Perfect. 
perfect. And while you may have gardened in the past and you may have successfully birthed <laughs> um, seeds into flowers and foods and all that, try one thing new. Try a, a, a pepper you've never done before, a flower you've never planted before, and, and see how it goes because life is meant to be lived and sometimes we fail and sometimes we succeed, but it's that newness that keeps it fresh, that keeps it exciting. And the more you in, in, introduce new once a week, once a month, it won't be Groundhog's Day, but you did that. You have the ability. Can you do that? Absolutely. I love that suggestion. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for calling in. And we'll wish you the best. Thank Enjoy you. that garden. <laughs> okay. Thank you and so much. Take care. You got it. And for everybody listening today, well, learning from loss is not easy. you got to go through the fire. you got to get through the pain. You can come out the other end with pride, building a legacy, remembering those that you love, just learning from that experience. Because again, this is like the game of life, right? It's going to have highs and lows. Sometimes you're, you're going to succeed and sometimes you're going to roll the dice and not get what you wish. But it's all about living full out and just every day being intentional and just giving it your best. The entire Living Full Out family thanks you for listening. And remember, you can always go to either your iPhone or Alexa or Android and look for Living Full Out Radio in the App Store. And you can also go to social media. We'd love to hear from you. Comment on our, our posts or our videos. We want to keep you inspired in every way that we can. And of course, you can go to livingfullout.com to listen to more episodes. Here's to all of you living full out, learning from loss. But you know what? Life is awesome. Just smile, embrace it, go for it. Live your life full out in the biggest way you can. Talk to you next time. Thank you for listening to the Living Full Out Show with Nancy Soleri. To learn more about this program, visit livingfullout.com for the latest episodes. Connect with the Living Full Out community by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you have an inspirational story you want to share, email us at connect at livingfullout.com. Here's to you, Living Full Out.